Hey, this is Steve from Unexplored Films, back with some more filmmaking tips and tricks, and today I'm going to show you my basic workflow for Premiere Pro. Now this is a massive time saver, and I use this method daily to do my edits, and it will help you get it up and running quickly with Premiere to be able to edit fast. Now, it is a massive time saver to build some sort of project template folder just like this one. I use this daily to copy and paste when beginning a new edit and it saves hours and hours of having to set this up every time. It basically boils down to three main folders, project, assets and exports. You can add the documents one if you like for a client brief or anything else that you want to keep together with this but to be honest you really just need these three. So the first two are self-explanatory project, you're going to name that the name of your edit exports that's where the finished things are going to go and there's also a thumbnail folder there as well if it's for online assets is the one that has everything you're going to use for your project so this is where we're going to put our footage and then you've also got these other subcategories of things that may get created or added to the edit and you want to keep them all in one place if you have some kind of template like this it is going to save you so much time we're going to start by importing our footage that we have shot from our camera card now again this might sound like overkill but all it takes is several shoots to really this is a good idea. If your camera names the clips just as sequential numbers like this, you may want to rename your clips. This is because all it takes is for you to do a couple of shoots where the clips are named the same and if you have any relinking issues and your media goes offline, Premiere will get confused as to which clip 001 is the one that belongs in this edit. So the first thing I always do when I import footage before I edit anything is rename the clips using a program that adds the date and time that the clip was filmed on. This means that no two clips are ever going to be named the same and it just means that you're always going to avoid those relinking issues. So we do that just by highlighting all the clips. And I have a program down here called CF File Rename. I've had it for years. I think it might be still available, but if not, there will be similar ones that you can get. And it simply works by dragging and dropping the clips onto it. And boom, there we go. It's renamed all the clips with the date and time afterwards so that you're never gonna get this mixed up with anything else. So next you can rename the project folder, whatever the title of your project is, and then project file exactly the same. Now, the other thing that's great about this folder template method is that the Premiere project itself isn't just a standard blank project. What I've done is I've created a folder structure within the project already set up so that again I don't need to spend time building these folders every single time I start a project and you can build a new folder just by going to new bin. So these are the ones that I've created which are going to be kind of similar to the folders that we can see out here. Within sequences I've got one set up already called string out which I'll explain in a minute. This is where I like to start my edit and then I've got another drop down folder called old which is where any old edits are going to be put so that you can keep it nice and clear for your current edits and then I've got nests as well and that's going to become apparent as well. Now I'm actually going to switch over to a project that I've already edited at this point. It has multiple folders for A cam and B cam so I'm going to import my footage into this footage folder. Here are all my clips in the two different subfolders for A and B camera. Now we are ready to start editing so I have this initial timeline here called string out. Now this is just personal preference. Some people like to go through each clip up here in this window and scrub through, find the part they want, put an in and out point and drag it onto the timeline and do it that way. I personally don't like to work that way. I find I am much quicker if I take all of the clips and put them on at least one timeline called string out and that way I can see everything straight away. I can scrub through it in high speed and actually find the clips that I want here on the timeline and then go through and delete what I don't want and find the bits that I do want. I also have another trick where I tend to color code different topics. So let's say you had a key interview which is what we've got here. In fact you can already see that these clips are longer and there's audio in them so this is probably going to be interview footage right here. So what I tend to do is to make life easier I highlight everything that is one topic like an interview and I'll go to label and then select a different color. The default color is iris so what you're seeing down here this is iris. Helpfully they don't actually show you the colors they just call them fancy names but anyway it's currently set on iris so if we were to select rows I could instantly see that everything Everything in rows, which it's also changed over here, is interview. Next we've got these really long clips. I think this is a time lapse, so I'm going to say time lapse is green. And then I'm going to leave everything that's B-roll, which is just these clips here, in the current colour. And I'm going to shuffle it down to the end here. I'm just going to delete some extra channels that weren't needed. Right, so now we've instantly got a more workable looking amount of footage. It looks a lot less daunting. If it's an audio 
video-based edit, which a lot of the videos that I do are, the first thing you need to do is to actually watch this down and select everything that is usable in here that I may want to use. So this isn't stuff that you're definitely going to use, this is just like your favourites bin. So these are all options, and I would do the same with the B-roll. I would watch all this down, and I would pick the shots that are my favourites, and anything that I think could basically end up in the edit, and I wouldn't be unhappy. If there are any takes that definitely didn't work, I'm going to get rid of them at this stage. I'm just going to leave stuff that is all good options. So this is like cutting up your ingredients in the kitchen. You cut off the ends of the carrots <laughs> and you leave the bits that you would be happy to use in the meal. So let's say we've gone through that. Okay, so now this is kind of like our select spin. What do we do next? We leave it alone. We duplicate it before we begin editing and that way if you make a mistake you can come back to it. So what I do at this point is I take this string out and I duplicate it and I call this V1. So I'm now going to not edit the string out at all. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to edit V1. So this is where the cooking begins. I've chopped up the ingredients in the string out. I'm going to leave that alone. In fact, I'm going to close that so I can't get at it. And now I'm going to do my edit. So the first step I do is actually edit for radio. I edit as if I'm not seeing the image at all. I'm just picking the best parts of the audio, finding what I really want to say, what's the best way to tell this story. And I'm really going to get this down to what the best amount of time is. The next thing I'm going to do is look through my B-roll and look at all my selects and basically find the best shot to cover each idea that is being stated in the dialogue and just as importantly something to hide these cut points otherwise you're going to end up with a lot of jump cuts. Now some people like to drop these in on the same line here but what if I want to shuffle this around later? What I actually prefer to do is just drop it on the line above. So I'm keeping my interview shot on the lowest track and then on the next track up this is where I drop my b-roll. Next I could probably add some music. So let's say I've got this track this is from a music licensing site. I would probably keep my dialogue on the top track here if I needed to add any sound effects, these could go on these tracks here. And then I normally keep my music at the bottom. I don't know why. I just think it looks tidier. For this edit, we would probably find a nice edit point inside here and disguise a join. If I do have to disguise a join, I tend to put it on two separate tracks. And that way, if the edit changes later, it's not so difficult to alter the length of the track. So that's probably how I would build out the audio side of things. For audio, I would obviously level all of this interview dialogue and make sure it sounded really, really nice. Level the music behind it so that that it doesn't step on the dialogue. So next up, I can probably go to effects because I'm going to add a title. I tend to just go for the one called basic title and then I change it. So let's say I wanted to use this and then if the client has given you any steer on the font, color scheme, anything like that, this is where you could start to add your title. Okay, next step, color. So again, I would normally use the color tab over here with the Lumetri color just to do some tweaking. Now, there's obviously a lot of people that like to shoot in flat picture profiles and then add a LUT and there's plenty of tutorials about that. For the day-to-day -day stuff that I film, the turnarounds have to be quite fast and so we normally shoot in more natural looking picture profiles. But a couple of the things I would normally do is probably boost up the saturation a little bit. Obviously I would do any colour corrections if any of the shots didn't really match. For any overall colour corrections for the whole video, I would be more likely to go to new adjustment layer and then that way you can make the changes to the adjustment layer and not have to go through every single clip. And if there's anything you don't want affected, you just throw that on the line above the adjustment layer. So let's say I've watched this through a bunch of times and I've done all the audio leveling and the mixing and all this sort of thing. So now it would be ready to export. So I'll put my in and out points and then I will export. So I'm going to send it, of course, to the exports folder in the template for this project. If I want to choose a thumbnail or if I want to build one in Photoshop, I'll put it in there. And that just keeps everything for this project nice and neat. When the edit notes come back and you need to make a second version of this, you've still got your string out in case you had to go back to the well and find some other clips. You've got your V1. Now, the next thing I do, as soon as the client notes come in, I will duplicate this again and call this V2. Never alter the previous edit because the note might come back another time and say, actually, can we go back to this aspect or that aspect of version one? Always duplicate before you start your new edit, and that's going to keep things really tidy. And as this goes on, so you have three, four, five, etc., you could put V1 and string out in the old folder here. And that way you're always just seeing your latest edit. If you're nesting clips, this is going to create a little sequence down here. Again, we don't want this clogging up the sequence folder, so I'm going to put that in nests. So it basically just keeps all of this reduced down to these folders, and it is a lovely, tidy way to present your project if you're handing it off to someone. And that's pretty much it. That is my basic workflow of keeping everything tidy whilst doing an edit in Premiere. So guys, I really hope that helped. Please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this, and you will get to see some more. I've been Steve from Unexplored Films, and I will see you next time.